Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. We're going to be creating a memory foam effect in Blender here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is delete my light. I'm going to add in a cube and this is going to be my memory foam. Um, you can make this whatever size you want. Go ahead and tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and then I'll just pull up my subdivide menu here and I'll give it a ton of cuts. Right now this is about 10, maybe I'll go for like 15. That looks pretty good for right now. We'll come back to this if we need to. Um, basically the more number of cuts that you have, uh, the higher quality the memory foam pushes. So I'm going to go ahead and add in something that will actually push onto our mesh. Uh, I find that a torus is pretty good for this just to demonstrate this effect. Um, so we have our torus here. You don't have to subdivide this unless you really want to. Um, this is going to be our brush and then our cube right here is going to be our canvas. So go ahead and add in your canvas. So go over here to your physics properties, add a dynamic paint to your cube. Type is going to be canvas. Go ahead and click on add. And then instead of paint for your surface type, you're actually going to choose displace. Make sure you checkbox this incremental right here, and then also checkbox this dissolve. The dissolve makes sure that the memory foam comes back up, and then the incremental makes it so that until you pull the torus back up, um, it will actually not be effective. And you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Now this time value right here is actually how long it takes the memory foam to go back up. I'll just go with a value of 100 right now to show you the example. Go ahead and click on your torus next, add a dynamic paint value, and then we're gonna use brush for our type click on add brush and now we just need to animate this so let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna click on my Taurus now I'm on frame one I is my shortcut for insert keyframe I'll use location and rotation I'll skip forward to frame 30 I'll move this down so that it's kind of intersecting our cube I'll insert another keyframe and then I'll highlight my first keyframe shift D to duplicate and I'll just drag this out to maybe frame 50 now if we go back we should have our dynamic pain effect here and just like that, we do. And now this is our memory foam effect. Now you'll notice it's pretty low quality. Why is that? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, we don't have a lot of subdivisions on our cube. And two, we can actually add a subdivision modifier after the dynamic paint. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, right click, subdivide. And I think I'll do this one more time. I'm going to give this a quick save so that this doesn't get lost. All right. And then we'll go ahead and play this back. Now, normally you can bake this, but look at how much more pronounced the effect is now. Now, another thing you're going to want to do is obviously shade this smooth. But if we want to smooth it out even further, I will go ahead and add a subdivision modifier to my cube. And now you'll see it's very smooth. Now, this is level one. You can bump it up to two for render. Let me just go ahead and play this back for you. It's going to play a little bit slower here. But look at how much smoother that is. I also want to pull this torus up a little bit more so you can really see the effect here. Let's go ahead and play this back. As you can see, our torus presses into our foam and then our foam slowly goes away. Now, remember that value I talked about earlier? If we go back to our dynamic paint, this time value here is how long it takes for the memory foam to recover. So if I make it 200 and I play this back, it will take a lot longer for that memory foam to come back into its normal place. See how long that took there? So that's how you adjust that. Um, and then I wanna show you what this incremental value does too. If I turn this off, I, wanna, I want you to see what, what happens here. Um, as soon as this presses in, it'll start rebounding even before the Taurus leaves the object. So notice how it already started rebounding. It was probably kind of subtle, but if I bump up this speed to 50, you'll notice. I don't know if you can see that, but it already started rebounding even before the Taurus left. So I would just keep that checked. And then I think a good value for this is about 100, maybe maybe 120, depending on what type of foam this was supposed to be. But that looks pretty good. So yes, you can use multiple objects with this, and yes, you can pretty much animate it any way you want to. Just be careful when you get towards the edges of your cube, it kind of acts a little bit more strangely, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, I'll add in another object, I'll just add in a cube, scale it down, and I think I'm gonna rotate it and push it into the side here. So I'm just going to add in a cube and I'm going to have it push in from the side. Uh, make sure you add your dynamic paint brush. And I'm just going to insert my location. I'll go to frame 20 and I'll just push this in just a little bit here. And I want to show you what happens when you do that. Sometimes, not always, it's going to give you a weird result. All right, so here we go. So we have our cube pushing in. Let's see what happens here. See, you'll get this weird result sometimes depending on the... Um, geometry so just be careful where you press into your object you will get some weird weird artifacts and results like this depending on where you're pressing and 
The only fix for this that I could think of is maybe adding a remesh modifier, but other than that, you guys are pretty much all set to go. You can add your materials, your lighting, you can add any objects that you want pressing into your, um, your canvas. And of course, you don't have to have this object showing. In fact, you can hide your Taurus and still have that imprint without um, rendering the Taurus if you want to. That's totally up to you guys. I think it makes more sense to have the object so you can see it, but if you're trying to demonstrate something where you're getting an imprint on an object, like maybe a logo, maybe that's what you would want to do there, and you want to want to hide your logo and just have the imprint on whatever it is, maybe clay, maybe foam, maybe water, some sort of cool water or ice effect. There's a lot you can do with just this technique here. Um, and it's pretty cool because it's completely customizable. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you learned how to make this kind of foam pressing effect. Again, you're going to have to play with the values to get it the way that you want to. There's intensity, there's rebound, there's all those different values within the dynamic paint panel over there. So definitely play around with it. Let me know what you guys thought. Um, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you tried this, if it worked, if it didn't. Uh, message me on Instagram. I'll try to help you guys out. Have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next tutorial.